Today we're talking about Bitcoin, an untraceable, unregulatable cryptocurrency. Now in an unrelated story, the Department of Justice has just traced and then seized $3.6 billion worth of laundered Bitcoin. Well, that was fun while it lasted. Now what was supposed to make cryptocurrency so anonymous was the fact that it's kind of like having a bank account without having a bank. Now, I'm weird, so when I like to think about the whole system of cryptocurrencies, I imagine something kind of like a bean counter. You fully control your own little pocket in the system, and you can collect or distribute beans to other people's pockets without getting any higher powers permission. As long as you've got more beans than you intend to give someone, well, that transaction will go through. So far, this all probably sounds pretty standard. It's this next step where things get incredibly traceable. You see, every one of these little bean transfers is being jotted down on a public ledger that everyone participating in this bean economy has access to. That ledger is called the blockchain. Now let me reiterate for a second, anyone in the system has access to this ledger of transactions happening between wallets. This couldn't be more traceable if the FBI were designing it. Now we'll go into more detail on that in a minute. But first, with everything I just said, why did anyone at any point think that any of this was anonymous? Well, for that answer, I went down a rabbit hole that all but ensures half of the views on this video are going to be from the FBI. Christopher Ray, remember to like and subscribe. Now, the anonymous nature of cryptocurrencies does not stem from an anonymous nature of transactions. These transactions, well, they're happening in the publicest of public eyes, just out in the open. Instead, the anonymous nature of cryptocurrency comes from the fact that you're not required to provide any information to stake out your own little pocket in this system, or thousands of pockets. Sure, I can see that Wallet A has paid Wallet B one pinto bean, but do I know who owns Wallet A or Wallet B? Nope, it's anonymous. What we're dealing with today is just a bunch of nameless pockets engaging in incredibly public transactions. Now, in fact, a popular way scammers drive up the value of NFTs is by owning two anonymous wallets, selling the NFTs to themselves for an exorbitant amount of money. Yeah, I'll pay myself $5 for my own items. And then you sell it to a sucker and say, I'll give you half the price the last guy paid for it. So with this style of anonymity in mind, let's get to the crime. Back in 2016, the cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex was hacked. To go back to our bean counting metaphor, Bitfinex would be the guy leaning over the top of the whole egg carton shifting beans from one pocket to another. Alright, wallet A wants to send wallet B a pinto bean. I'm gonna scoop it out of his wallet and move it to his wallet. Now what these hackers were able to do was put in some malware into the code and start spamming our poor little bean mover with thousands of commands to move thousands of beans from all sorts of different pockets into one singular pocket that was anonymously controlled by the hacker. Within hours, billions of dollars had been shifted from individual accounts and put under the control of today's criminal mastermind. So, right off the bat, with everything I've said, this might seem like an incredibly easy case to solve. Hmm, a bunch of people are claiming their wallets are missing coins, and we can go through the public blockchain to see, yep, they are missing coins, and there were all these traceable transactions that are leading to one very specific wallet. I don't know who owns that wallet, but this seems like a pretty good place to start the investigation. And, well, that's exactly what happened. According to court documents, around August of 2016, a hacker breached Bitfinex security systems and infiltrated its infrastructure. While inside, the hacker was able to initiate over 2,000 unauthorized Bitcoin transactions from victim's wallet to an outside wallet. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Still, let me just huck a few monkey wrenches into this investigation. So, it's 2016. 
We know that the money was stolen and we know where the stolen money is. We can see it. It's in this wallet right here. Two questions remained. Who controls this wallet and how do we get the Bitcoin out of this wallet? Now while the Department of Justice was noodling over these two questions, their accountants were tracing these stolen Bitcoins Milo and Otis style adventure across the internet. Don't worry guys, we'll get you home to your owner's wallets. Now first, they sat in that collection wallet and just sort of remained untouched for about a year. Then they were transferred to a website on the dark web that pools clean Bitcoin and stolen Bitcoin with the goal of obscuring the origin of any individual Bitcoin. Who knows, maybe that Bitcoin was withdrawn from the pool from an innocent person who had put it in. Innocent and guilty anonymous wallets pooling their money together? We don't know who it is and we don't know who's taking it out because that gets all jumbled up. It's basically the economic equivalent of trying to lose the cops by running into a crowd. Now in the end, it was traceable, so bang up job with that money laundering. From there, it was passed and shifted through a bunch of other privately controlled wallets to further obscure its identity. Long story short, this stuff, it's super duper traceable. Still, the federales were stuck asking two questions. Who controls this wallet and how are we going to get these darn coins home? Now for a while there, investigators were watching this money get passed around like a doobie at a Willie Nelson concert and just waiting for someone to slip up and put it into a non-anonymous account. And finally, there was a recent break in the case. You see, Bitcoin, well it has a bunch of positives and negatives, but one super major negative to crypto is you can buy like five things with it. Right now you can pretty much either use it to pay people or just flex how much virtual wealth you have by holding up your phone to a camera. Suddenly, earlier this year, all the transaction arrows started pointing back to one singular wallet again. That's right, the hacker was looking to cash out after years of laundering and then re-laundering his money. This wallet, unlike the other ones I've mentioned so far in this episode, was verified with photographs of the suspect's California driver's license and a selfie style photograph. It was also registered to an email address containing his first name. Now, As soon as the money started being pooled into this non-anonymous account, the judge began to stretch his book throwing hand for a mighty reckoning. Warrants to search the suspect's email and phone records were immediately approved and the surveillance state, well they were turning their focus solely on getting this guy. Now at this point, investigators had the who, what, when, where, why, and how. But they were still stuck on one loose end. How do we get this money out of this digital account and back to the original investors? No one like a bank, you can't just send a letter to Bitcoin corporate and say, hey, these coins are stolen, give them back to their rightful owners. You need a password, and if you don't have a password, you are truly out of luck. Billions in crypto have been lost every year because legitimate owners forgot the passwords to their account. There is no governing authority or customer support line to any of this. Unless the suspect unlocked his wallet for the federal government, those stolen coins were just gonna sit there. So what's a Department of Justice to do? Well, in an incredibly, wait, what? Move. They simply hacked his account and took it all. Karma's a real pain in the rear. I guess, yay, victory? This one feels a little weird. Now unfortunately, the government has been a little hush hush on the how part of this seizure equation, but what I can tell you is this is not the first time the government has hacked a private bitcoin wallet to seize massive amounts of cryptocurrencies. There was the time we hacked the wallet of Russian hackers who collected a ransom from the colonial pipeline cyber attack. Or of course you can't forget last year's contentious case of the United States versus just a whole bunch of Bitcoin seized from one specific wallet, 
where authorities were successfully able to use civil forfeiture law to hack and seize Bitcoin from an American who is behind the Silk Road website. Basically, turns out that crypto is incredibly traceable and incredibly easy to seize, as long as the government deems that you're worthy of their attention. No, quick public service announcement to anyone sketchy who watches my channel regularly. If you're paying some sort of criminal crypto, those transactions are forever going to be logged to your wallet from his in the public blockchain ledger. Stick to cash. It's worked for the first few thousand years. Might have to stick around for a couple more. And as always, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.